Back of Reeves. What up, G? Back of Reeves. What up, G? Back of Reeves. What up, G? You got a snack? <laughs> Sarai, you ready to go to school? Awesome. Hey, what I'm talking about. Good morning, y'all. So, we're still on this postpartum, like, hair loss thing. And I just want to show y'all literally what happened. So, I, like, you know, take my hair out of a bun or whatever, and I just pull my hair. And literally, like, hair comes out every time. So, I'm, like, literally shedding, like, crazy and I mean, it's like, I, you can't even see that, but it's just, uh, I'm like trying not to be extra about it. Also, I'm just imagining like if I had not cut my hair, like this would be even crazier, but I've got a few or a couple truly uh, different companies that I found products from that were recommended to me in a Instagram post that I had done a couple weeks ago now. Um, so yeah, I haven't started using anything yet. I am waiting for actually a package to come in from one brand that I'm hoping works. I've heard really great reviews of. I'm not gonna share yet because, you know, if it don't work, I ain't gonna waste my time telling y'all about them. <laughs> now granted, with all that being said, you can have postpartum hair loss and still grow your hair back without anything, just improving your diet and things like that. So I'm completely aware that that is definitely a way to combat postpartum hair loss, especially because like 80% of women experience some sort of postpartum hair loss. And so, you know, it's a big thing, but at the same time, I think naturally our bodies learn how to replenish themselves if we put good things in them. So this brand actually that I'm uh, gonna start with is a supplement and like hair products. So we'll see. Um, Cause I, I also am just, you know, I'm terrible with taking pills, <laughs> like terrible. And this time when I was pregnant with, with Micah, y'all, my midwives, had me on so many like supplements because he was just literally sucking all the life out of me, literally. And so, oh, there's barely no more creamer. So, what was I saying? They had me on so many supplements. It was nuts. I was probably taking upwards to 15, 20 pills a day. And for somebody like me who hates taking any sort of pill, I mean, I'll take pills. It's not the taking of the pills that I struggle with. It's the remembering to take them around the same time, every day thing. Like I've tried, like honestly, like I tried habit stacking. I tried putting an alarm on my phone. I just, something in me repulses consistency, like truly. And I don't know what it is, uh, maybe it's the fact that I'm not a machine and some days I remember and some days I don't. Um, I don't know. Am I not normal in that situation? And when I had to with Micah when I was pregnant, because I was physically like tired and all that kind of stuff, if I didn't, um, I did it when I had to. But now that I don't have to, even though I have to because I still need vitamins and minerals in my body and I, I'm my eating oh y'all let's talk about the eating lately my eating habits as of late Sarai asks for a happy meal every day and does she get a happy meal every day no but does she get a happy meal most days yes <laughs> and I don't know y'all I'm sorry to whoever this offends, but I love McDonald's. Like a Big Mac 
with fresh fries. Now, listen, y'all, Mark worked at McDonald's when he was younger. And he, whenever we go to McDonald's, he's always like, I need fresh fries. Like, I don't care if it takes 10 minutes to cook them. Like, I need fresh fries. And for a couple years of this, I was just like, oh my God, every time you gotta wait for fresh fries. Like, why you gotta be so picky? Like, can you just like get the fries that they already have made? Like, is it that deep? But when we started getting the fresh fries, it was kind of a game changer. So now I really can't do McDonald's without fresh fries. I mean, I can't, but like I can tell the stark difference now. But anyway, so we're both, we have a guilty pleasure in McDonald's. And we've been diving into that guilty pleasure more lately because we've been out and about more. And Sarai literally asks for a Happy Meal every day because she's watching these videos on YouTube, kids, talking about Happy Meals and cheeseburgers. And literally, y'all, we were at my mom's house with my baby cousins this past weekend. And Sarai is literally, like, there's like this little, like, little tykes, like little car that one of my baby cousins who's like four was like driving in. And it's the one where you use your feet to pedal on the bottom, but you can still steer and whatever. And Sarai was standing outside her window, car window, taking her order. <laughs> and not taking her order like from a drive through window. She was acting like the people at Chick-fil-A because we go to Chick-fil-A all the time and she literally knows the branding. Like she will find the Chick-fil-A app on Mark's phone and say, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. And we're just like, oh my gosh, how are we already here and you're only two? But anyway, so it's been a lot of Chick-fil-A. A lot of McDonald's the past few weeks. And so we got to get it together. What? And I'm not going to lie to you. At first, when I read it and you were like, why are we reading this? What are we doing? I felt like irritated because I, I felt yeah. like you wanted to keep us on our regular, regularly scheduled program. And I felt like God was taking me into a different direction. And as I was sitting there and we were still going through Matthew, I was thinking like, well, maybe I'm not supposed to deviate. Maybe maybe I'm a distraction. No. Maybe. Did you hear what you said? I know. No, no, no. We want to, to the first sentence that you said regarding that. You said, I feel like we weren't supposed to. I don't want us to get off track or something like that. Um, or you didn't want us to like get off track or deviate, but God was telling me. So basically like, nah, we were not supposed to get off of what we were supposed to do. But whether me and you did this with Galatians 4 or not, you were, are supposed to do Galatians 4. So instead of God saying, I've been in this position before too. Where I'm like, okay, God, like, since I read this, <laughs> I'm doing this now. Do I gotta go back and do this? He's like, yeah. Okay. Today just means I need more of you. Okay. That don't mean take something away. I try. I actually started. Um, we first started our devotions, and I stopped mine. So I'm in numbers, and I'm, I stopped numbers because I'm like, we doing it back to you. So I checked the box, and I said, no, that's in addition to. That means I'm getting more of the time right now. This may not last forever. You may not get a Galatians 4 poppy, poppy uh, tomorrow. Cool. But today, I wanted us, and I'm, I was intrigued by you even bringing it up. So I'm like, let's do it together. The At next, first you weren't. It wasn't that I wasn't intrigued, babe. It was like, you came out of nowhere with it. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's been sitting there this whole time. <laughs> on Instagram, she could have been in Galatians 4. But I wasn't. I know you wasn't. That's That was where I was coming from. Like, well, I didn't, I don't understand. I, I don't understand why we deviate, but I was like, let's hear it. And then you read it, and then you just say that. So I'm still like, 
Uh, are we going to study this? Is she going to go to another version? <laughs> like, I didn't say anything because I didn't know where I was going with it. Like, I didn't know why I was reading it. I just knew that God said read it, and I read it, and I felt like you were expecting me to have this whole, like, revelation instantly, and I really I, didn't. I, I felt I didn't like, feel like you wanted to. I didn't feel like you wanted to sit in it. And sit in it from a place of God told me more. Not, not so yes, God will say things to us, just read it and we sit there. But most of the time, He wants you to spend time with you there. So it's like, let me see what the context is. Let me I find wanted something to do that. that. Like I wanted to do that. I but I you didn't get that vibe because you instantly asked me. Well, what does the study guide say with it? Or what is God telling you? And I literally didn't say anything because I'm like, he ain't told me nothing yet. Like, no, I'm still, exactly like, taking it in. And, no, and I paused and I told you, hold on, let me sit with it for a second. And when I still couldn't get my whole, like, understanding around it, that's when I said, let's just go into Matthew and continue on with the devotion that we have because... I don't have a whole thing yet, like in this moment. And I felt like you were putting a little bit of pressure on me to like have this like formed idea or formed feeling about it. And I just did it. And truth be told, like that's why I think like I wanted, I had to like read it out loud to you because I need your help in that. Like I, I think yeah, that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm yeah. quick to, okay. When you ask questions like, what have you, what God, did God tell you about it? Or what, what, uh, what does the study guide say? And I didn't have the time to get that before continuing the conversation because it all happened in one moment. That made me feel like I'm unprepared. I'm inadequate and not worthy. To have a revelation, not worthy to understand what this is saying, not worth like so. All of that came when you started questioning me instead of saying, "Let's go to Galatians. let's look at the study guide together." Like it took you a minute to get to the point where you were like, "Let's look at the study guide together." You said some things before and had energy before, like I got a frustrated energy from you because. I was taking us in a different direction that you didn't want us to go into because you had your mind set on Matthew. So, like, that's where, like, that energy was coming from me of, like, I just put myself out there and saying, like, hey, I feel like I'm supposed to read this. I'm reading it. I need a pause for a moment to take it in. And when I didn't understand it, you were more so, like, Telling me how to understand it, but not helping me understand it. Eventually you did, which is how we got here. But that's what that was for me. Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, I apologize. I didn't mean to. I just felt like it was out of nowhere and there was no, I didn't feel like you wanted to go deeper. Um, so, yeah, I I misread it. I'm sorry. Here we are. Galatians 4. Um, okay, so I, I think we should go like we can't speed through this. We can't read the whole chapter and and not stop and like talk for context and like. Well, let's get to let's. Sense. So. So instead of going through the whole thing, like we both. I mean, obviously we paused, read study guide stuff. Like at this, both of us. 
us, which is why we're like here mm-hmm. now. I ain't even weird. Not a lot, yeah. but just we've opened up. I ain't got into it where I want to no. because this whole chapter is very it's a juicy. Lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I think maybe we talk about like, okay, so look at that. Oh, the dogs. Yeah. Why don't you say like what? Say what we read. Say what you read out of here, like the setup and stuff, like the quick version of like your like oh what you God. took from that. <laughs> I mean, you read the whole thing only thirty minutes ago. Yeah, but but it, even that was a lot because that was all of Galatians. That was okay. that was setting up so all of Galatians. So what? So what about Paul specifically? Like we're looking at Galatians chapter four. Yes. And. I read it in the Amplified Version earlier, but this is reading in the, what, NIV? NLT. NLT? New Living Translation. Okay. And. So, okay. So, where so, is Paul? Who, who, like, give us the basics. Well, so Paul is writing this letter to Galatia. And he Which, spent time there setting up. I'm going to say this real quick. Yeah. I didn't know that I didn't know that. these books <laughs> yeah. were based on That's people of is. the tour of the of the places where these letters or these things are we're being said. Yes. Right. So yeah. like like or Galatia like was Timothy. a place. Yeah. yeah. Or like Timothy is a person. Person. But Yeah. So it's Probably. like I didn't I didn't understand what like, why books of the Bible were named what they are. I'm still discovering a lot of that stuff too because like it was one thing to like read the Bible or go to like certain scriptures that were like, you know, prominent like know the scriptures, know my other scriptures. Yeah. But it's another thing to like actually like study it and dive in to right. understand like where they're coming from, what the context is, what's going on before that, after or while they're writing this stuff in the first place. Because <laughs> some like Galatia was a response it was like hey this is what y'all doing over there this is y'all, you're talking about the book of galatians yeah like well, y'all have i'm not there anymore but y'all have seemed to forgotten or taking steps back from like what i taught y'all while i was there yeah so like this is like I'm paul coming back to people to that was already like he'd already spent time there yes. already established the following them all of that yes he even talked about it at the end like at the end of the chapter like that right, I was just there, and y'all were looking out for me as if I was Jesus Christ Himself. Right. So now that I'm not there, wanna, he's even saying like, I don't want to give y'all this energy that I'm giving y'all right now. If I was in person, I wish I was in person so that I, so my tone could be a little different. Mm-hmm. But I need y'all to understand what I'm saying. Right. Almost as if he knew I'm writing this to y'all now, mm-hmm. but people are gonna read this in the future mm-hmm. and need to understand how serious. What I'm telling y'all is, it's like if you got five kids or three kids, like for us, three of us in the house, and there were certain times when one of us would get in trouble, but it was something that maybe all of us do or would do, and so the term would come up, I'm going to make an example out of Mm y'all. So you see this one, and what I remember him telling this story, (laughs) my brother got in trouble for cussing um, cussing out his teacher at church, I mean, at school. Or my pops. I didn't see the whooping or hear the whooping, but I just know that he got whooped for a long time. I had my bowl of cereal, I'm watching Gawther, and I just hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but that was an example mm-hmm. of like, this is a little rough for maybe because I need everybody, everybody else to understand. experience this to understand the seriousness of what's going on. So hopefully I don't have to do this again because y'all right. know what it is. Right. And Paul was reluctant to do it, but he did it. Yeah. Because he knew that on December the 6th, 2021, that J.D. Mark Godbo would read this and need to understand the severity of what he's saying yeah. as it pertains to sonship and our relationship well, with let's God just, Jesus. Well, let's just talk yeah. about the sonship aspect then first. Like so, that okay, he is God. God's heirs. Read I'm gonna break behind this. Read one through five. Okay. So it says, think of it this way. 
If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, I feel like we've got to go on to this part. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, go on. This Stop is it. Psalm 7. And because, seven, 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 okay. and because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. So, so much there. First off, slave. People get stuck on that word, especially in the Bible. It ain't what white people made it to be eventually. No, 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 no. White people didn't create slavery. You know that, right? Who created slavery? Black people. Okay. If, 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 if we're the original people, they're... Well, okay, fair. Yes, yes. No, no, no. But no, no. What I'm saying, though, <laughs> is slave, yes, true. You're talking about... But the Hebrew... To, to the, I'm talking about the, the change of what it will become. No, no. They were treating Egyptian. slaves crazy terrible throughout the span of time. I know. But I'm I know. But you're, Egyptian used to... Right. Okay. But I, you're I more so saying to the, to the, the, the concept know, of African slavery in America or in the that, Americas yes. Yes. of which changed the trajectory of like our like black people on you know, in America, yes. South and, America. And what most people and, think about when when you say slave, slave today, that's exactly what people say. Right, about. right. Slavery, like, yes. Yes. That's not what Hebrew slavery was. Hebrew slavery was like, good. Like, people would literally give their lives over to being slaves because they were treated so good. And A bond servant is what. And you would all know. They still use. I mean, but they still use, like, slave was a term in Hebrew, not slavery as the word, but there's a, I forgot the, the Hebrew term for it, but the rules were, were so good, like, you can only serve for, like, six years stints unless you gave the permission to extend it. Oh. Um, when you left, you would leave with whatever you worked with, so you would leave with lamb and sheep and goats and all, of it. like, you would leave with an inheritance. So you got married, there y'all had kids. When you were free, so were your kids and your wife, and you would go to start a new life. It wasn't a derogatory, it wasn't like we get beatings, like slaves were treated like children. Mm -hmm. So when Paul is saying an inheritance from a kid, for example, for a kid from their parents that have passed, that's basically saying. As a kid, like to get your inheritance, normally it's like what 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So before that, you're just like a kid yeah. where you don't get a chance to like have the yeah. inheritance. Right. And then you get to the point that you get to be 18 and then you can inherit everything else. But before yeah. that, you're the same, all of y'all are the same. Right. That's how the law was. Right. Everybody was the same, under yeah. the same law, doing the same things. But when Jesus came, when you get to the age of your inheritance, well now that goes out the window. And you have that direct relationship. But is he saying we are going to be children, God's children He's until saying, now we are. We are God's children. Yes. But it's the concept of the guardianship. Huh? It it talks about is that the next one? Maybe I'm jumping ahead. Hold on. So when the first time come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. So to get us out of so this is telling yes I, yeah. what i'm thinking of is something different okay. essentially yes this is outlining like the frame of reference 
for which what he's going to go into. Yeah, yeah, same idea. kid. Yeah, yeah. You got a kid. Then you also got slaves that live in the house with a kid. Mm-hmm. Meaning they're not um, biologically. Born biologically to the parents. There's no difference between the child between born the child to the father, born to the father and, and the children who were not born to the father. The slaves. The slaves. Jesus comes. You come of age. Where now it's about your last name and you've been an heir to what I've left for you. Yes, but the, the point that I'm trying to focus on is the concept that the biological son is God's child and the slave, the slave who is the Gentile, who had practiced and idolized pagan things, other religions, other idols, other... Head. No, I'm saying, he's, I know. He's first setting the table to get people to understand how this is possible. Yes, and what I'm saying is, terms. that's what I'm, I'm trying to get to the point of, the reason why that's important is because he's trying to express not only the the idea that Jesus Christ is Lord, he saved us, but he's also reemphasizing the concept that whoever chooses Jesus, whoever yes. follows God is equivalent. So like this idea yeah, I mean, that but, certain people, no, this idea that certain people are God's people and certain people are not and that for example you can't you can't become God's child in certain like denominations like for but like no, but you have to you're going way ahead you got to under this we can't skip over this part because this is important to understand why that's possible you can't just tell people that because they're not going to get it that's why you okay. have to start what you just said Everybody don't agree with that. That's why he's writing his letter because yes. they didn't, they weren't with that. So no, he I know a letter he's... to explain here's the how and why. I understand. So, I'm trying to get from my own understanding that yeah, that's what he's we saying. Don't, we don't get, you're skipping ahead. He says that in a way that you're going to understand. But but he's setting the table now so that you can get all the understand. There's so much there, but you can't skip all I'm not the, skipping it. I'm just talking through like where my brain is at with it. I'm not trying to skip anything. I'm trying to like but connect it. Stay on the child slave part. Okay. Let's continue to walk through that. Okay, go ahead. Walk yeah. us through it. So, so, so. Let me go back to mom. So, okay, so. In basically, by talking about the kid and the, the slave so that's the same, same rules that are going on in that house everybody same rules apply to you same rules apply to them now you're an adult now you're an heir now you get everything that god has for you because jesus christ came born of a woman subject to the law meaning he didn't come in the supernatural like boom you're here and everything is, and i'm in my glory and all he came through, as Tim Ross put it, a womb that he created. Mm-hmm. He literally did everything the way that a human would do, subject to the law. That's very important because yeah. some people try to say, oh, well, he didn't even abide by the law. No, he did. Who? Wait. Jesus. Jesus? Wait. People say that Jesus didn't abide by the law? Yeah. That was, that was the Pharisee like that. That's oh, why Jesus speaking, was always oh, in conflict. To, you're speaking of par, as far as like back then. Yeah, like that's that's why he put I'll go, I'll get subject, even though they actually own everything the father had. Okay, okay, it's God giving me even more revelation. So you got so father dies and he's. His inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up. Meaning they're under the same laws as everybody else. They can't drive, they can't pay, they ain't paying mortgage. Like they're not doing all the things that they will eventually do when they grow up. So it's it's just as if they're they're slaves. Um, even though they actually own they they own everything. They just don't know it yet or can't even like use it yet. But literally they know they own everything. They had to obey their guardians until they reached whatever age their father set. 
So the guardians is the law. You got to obey the law until God saw fit to send Jesus, which was the perfect time. And um, I read a study guide that Daniel prophesied like 483 years, and like it was it was coming upon that time when Jesus finally came. Uh. So, um, and that's the way it was. That's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. So, like literally slaves to the principles and powers of this world. So, like the law was the law. But it was tainted by man. That's why in Matthew Jesus is like basically showing, hey, this is what was really meant by what y'all were saying. Y'all were y'all were making it all about the actions and stuff, but God were God was into your heart. So y'all added stuff like love everybody but hate your enemies. When that's not what God said. Mm -hmm. God actually wanted you to love your enemies first because love everybody. Period. Especially your enemies, because that's when you actually show him yeah. versus being like the pagans of the world that only love people that love them back. Yeah. So we were slaves to that, like literally um, um, trying to do all the things that the law was saying to do and failing miserably. Everybody would, not just the, the, the people that were simple people, in the, but even like Pharisees and religious leaders. But when the right time came, God sent his son born of a woman, subject to the law. Born of a woman is saying, that's the supernatural side of things. That's like, there was no man in law. This was clearly God. Uh, yeah. He didn't say born of man and woman, born right. of a woman, yeah. subject to the law. So because he was born of a woman, which is a human way to enter this world, yeah. he was subject to the law too. So he was yeah. born into the same and thing. And he had to live a life under the law. Even so though he was he, God. Right. Even though he was God, he still had to do the things. He was the and perfect live example. like he was quote unquote supposed to, even though like, yeah. Mm -hmm. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so he could adopt us as his very own children. So we were all, everybody was slaves to the law. Jesus coming basically adopted everybody under God. So now everybody's his children, not just the Jews. Uh -huh. Not just the Gentiles, not just, not the, just the, the Israelites, the, the Israelites, yeah. not just the Hebrews, but not just the Jew, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, because we are not his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. So the spirit that's in Jesus, he put in us. Mm -hmm. That's why we acknowledge him as Father. Remember when we were in the Lord's Prayer? And we were shown how, like, Father, that was, like, the first time or the second time that it was ever used uh, in prayer. Yeah. Because for, to Jews, that was, like, too intimate mm -hmm. to call somebody Father, even God. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus, Jesus did it first mm -hmm. and it becomes an illustration of how we should acknowledge God. Right. God, the Father. Yeah. Um... Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. So Jesus comes, now we're his children. We're no longer slaves to the law that he gave us, that we had to do, but we are literally free. You weren't free with the law. You were freer than, like you weren't being abused and all of that. Like the rules were for a good cause. But there were still rules mm -hmm. and rules that was 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 enforced by man mm -hmm. who was imperfect. Mm -hmm. So it was just made it like harder to do. So it was as if I'm a slave. Like, man, like I gotta do this. I messed up. Let me go get a burger. Oh, I messed up. Let me go get this 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 ram, this ram. or whatever. And make the, make the trap to this building and and make this sacrifice because I like Jesus came. Now I can breathe. Now I'm really free. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go into eight? Oh, you got something to add to any of that? No. I honestly, I don't want to go on because I feel like that feels 
like a lot to take in. Well, yeah. However, he had to go on because that was just the premise of the message that he was trying to get out. Well, I, I, clearly. I'm saying for me right now today, like, I feel like that's what I'm supposed to sit with because even me running into the next thing earlier is like, the way my brain works is like, I'm like, just connecting dots and trying to give context and find understanding and pausing and sitting with this tells me and gives me a physical pause to say like, okay, take your time. Don't okay. try to like get all of it at one time, but understanding that even few words carry so much and it's not about like being able to say you read the whole chapter and you have this understanding right. it's exactly. a matter of saying going like you say like you get lost in it like not like giving God taking a, the time to go verse yeah. by verse verse and really like taking it in and yeah. like even this conversation right now like I never had this understanding before at this moment like this concept that we were slaves before Christ came and like we take are, step further. What? To tie two things together that we've been talking about. Hebrews 10. When I first studied Hebrews 10, the church thing didn't stand out because I didn't take it that way. I was like, clearly this ain't talking about church. They don't put church. <laughs> like the Bible ain't a like ch church is one of those terms that, that's not like this ambiguous like thing like if it meant church it was a church but what drew me into the whole chapter was the writer continuously um talking about what it means to be sons now mm -hmm. and what jesus really did mm -hmm. like how he really um um changed old testament and God continues to reveal why this had me in the Old Testament this whole time. Because I wouldn't know none of this if I went to the Old Testament. The blood sacrifices, the animal sacrifices, that was only a covering. Mm -hmm. it, it's, the Hebrew term is covering. Covering the sin. Not wiping the sin away. Right. Not washing the sin away. Mm -hmm. It was just covering it. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to always come mm -hmm. because the sin would have only ever been covered. Do we really believe that we have dominion over the animals and stuff, yet the animal's blood can save us? Right, that, don't make, that don't make sense. No. God was so desperate for a relationship with us that he took something that wasn't worthy of what it was being asked to do, but because he was on it, his blessing was on it. Mm -hmm. He made it work. It was his lips to Moses that made it worthy to use blood as a sacrifice, to use animal's blood as a sacrifice to atone for our sins. That's it. So, taking it back to this, Jesus had to come, and when he did, because that was the only thing, the only blood that could wash the sin away. Mm -hmm. Because you have to go back every year to atone for these sins. Back in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. with a different animal, mm -hmm. with more blood. Not only was that like demoralizing, but think about the fact that I'm if I killed a man, I'm I'm trying to atone for it or whatever. I'm reminded of that every year. Every time I go back to everybody sacrifice, else in your community sees, sees it. it. <laughs> so that shame, <laughs> that burden that the you're guilt. walking around with, the guilt that because you're walking he, around with. Because at this point, at that point, did the animal sacrifices bring peace? No, there was a peace offering okay. that you would have afterwards. That wasn't an animal sacrifice, but it was like a, a, an aroma and a meal based on the other animal sacrifices you've given. Some of the parts would be cooked and you eat that as a meal with God. 
okay, and that, and that like would bring the, you the peace of yes. okay, okay. Yes. Versus now. Versus now, Jesus covered all of it. But you have to receive it by faith. Yeah. So if you don't believe that Jesus came, then you still walk around with that sin and you still walk around with that guilt. Uh, because no you belief. think because you think that it's by well, I got to atone for this, so um, the work. I shot it's my arm. Work. Let me cut my arm off so that I can show that I. People say, "Are oh, you don't deserve that? Are oh, you don't deserve this?" That's not your place. Mm -hmm. Oh, he killed a man. He don't deserve a second chance. That's not your place. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus paid for all of that. Jesus death paid for all of that. Think of the most egregious sin that you could think of. Jesus paid for that, but you have to receive it. Right. And you receive it by faith. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to fast forward to the end of the chapter that we read because this ties up too. Uh, Paul makes the, the, the comparison of Sarah and um, Hagar. Hagar. This blew my mind. Hagar represents the works of man trying to appease God. Trying to do it themselves. God promised Abraham a son. He tried to do it himself through Hagar. God eventually fulfilled that promise through Sarah. That's the promise. You can't have God's promise and your promise in the same house. Grace and law can't exist together. It's impossible. That's why Hagar had to go. It wasn't about faults. Because they were both at fault for in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. But you can't live by grace if you're still over here trying to live by this law. Right. You're still trying to do all these things to please me, but grace is there. They can't coexist. Which is why it's so other. confusing. Why is it confusing? It's confusing now, like in reality, now, today, like when you like go, try to go to church or you like try to get in the word and things like that without foundational understanding of like how God really works, you don't understand that concept of like, how can I possibly hold myself to the standards of make sure I do this and make sure I do that and make sure and make sure and make sure. And if I don't do that, then God is going to be unpleased with me. And also believe that God, I mean, that Jesus came and paid for all of my sins. And like, when I have a relationship with God and ask for forgiveness, it's given to me. Okay, so since you did that, we got to go into the rest of it. Because he, Paul talks about this. You got to check this out. Babe, just wait until you get out the bathroom. Because <laughs> if, if Abraham is right in his thinking that he can do what God said he was going to do, and that messes everything. That changes the context of God completely. If God would have accepted him sleeping with Hagar and getting Ishmael as his promise, what do we need him for? Then I can wish something into existence. Then I can manifest something into existence. So that, yeah. So before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so called gods. Little G, that do not even exist. So now that you know God, or should I say, now that God knows you, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? So Jesus came and gave you this free gift of salvation, a free gift of grace. But you want to go back to the law? Still? You still want to be out here killing animals and offering them a sacrifice? You still want to live with the daily burden of, did I do something on today? Oh, I'm going to Like, did I do something on last year? You for that? You, look. you really? And you call that freedom? Maybe to man, that's freedom because it's not as bad as the slavery that you was experiencing in Egypt that was not slavery. It was like dehumanizing. And torture. And torture. So that's like us in a lot of the stuff that we do today. Like we'll take, oh, well, at least we got this. At least we got that first black such and such. At least we got, and it's like, that, that's all you want? That's all it's about? 
that, like, well, it's the least I can. No. God has so much more for us. God has so much more for us. So then he keeps going and said, you are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. I fear for you. Perhaps all my hard work with you is for nothing. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things, for I have become like you Gentiles, free from those laws. Gentiles are always free from those laws, except they would pick up pagan Little stuff. things here and there, yeah, and they kind of do whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jews were tied to the laws. So, like, there's two sides of this spectrum that Paul is actually talking to both sides of, like, okay, Gentiles, like, now, y'all are under this covenant as well. So that don't mean that, like, now y'all are slaves. But also, over here to Jews, that don't mean that y'all are, are um, um, free. Oh, is it? Guardians? Mm. Mm. Jews went, Jew, Jews, y'all not slaves to law anymore. But Gentiles, y'all can't just do what y'all want to do because now Jesus has paid for y'all well, sins. They that's were what both, Paul is saying. Both were slaves, essentially. Jews well, no, Gentiles slaves. weren't because no, 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 no. Listen, yeah. it says in the scripture, he says you were enslaved to your sinful nature. You were enslaved to these other like I, idolatries and and things. Yeah, before you Gentiles other. knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods that don't even exist. So right. Also. The random stuff, and all exactly. That type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, you were a slave exist. to those. Yes. So, like, we were all slaves at to, some to point. To something. To some things. Yes. And Jesus brings freedom. To everyone. To everyone. Ooh, regardless of where. There. Okay, we were all slaves to something. Yeah. <laughs> talk that talk, girl. So, dear brothers and sisters, I'll be with you to live in as I do in freedom from these things. For I have become like you Gentiles, free from these laws. You did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. Surely you remember that I was sick when I brought you the good news. But even though my condition tempted you to reject me, you did not despise me or turn me away. No, you took me in and cared for me as though I were an angel from God or even Christ Jesus himself. Where is that joyful and grateful spirit if you felt then? I'm sure you would have taken out your own eyes and given them to me if, I had, if it had been possible. Have I now become your enemy because I am telling you the truth? Ain't that the way Ooh, we be? We are. Talk about the, 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 the cancel culture. Like, okay? as soon as you start to say something that, that people popular, don't like, they the, it's like, oh, what's something wrong with you? That, oh, what? It's truth. It's truth. That's all we said. <laughs> You're the grace and not the truth because I'm just going to look, this is what it is. Right? And I can stand on that boldly because. That's what God said. Mm -hmm. It ain't just me and I'm trying to prove what I what does say at the mark. No. Mm -hmm. It's in the work. Like you can read it for yourself. You step however you decide to, you can ask God for revelation from his lips. Like, it's here. Those false teachers are so eager to win your favor. <laughs> but their intentions are not good. They want your favor, they want your likes. They want your subs. They want your engagement. They want your engagement. <laughs> they want you to click the link, like they, the post, comment, subscribe, get on notification. <laughs> they want like they want you to do all the things, mm -hmm. but not for good intentions, not for your not family for to be your saved, good, not for the people around you for to be changed, their not good. for, yeah, like, for yeah, their yeah, good, for their good, yeah, but for. Not considering your good. Not considering your good. When yeah. God mm -hmm. does both things at the same time, God provides good for you and good for them. Yeah, when we was we was away this weekend serving. Like me and me and Mama Rita were talking, and even uh, uh, Marjorie said it. she was just like, "Yeah, like this, this feels like um, for all of us. Like God is." We're, we're all getting something from this that we need mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. Same situation, but everybody's God is using this situation to polish um, 
everybody in some way, shape, or form. That's normally how you know it's God. It's not yeah. just a, but God is never a one way street. Yeah. It's always a reservoir. He's like one answer to all problems. And to all problems in different all ways. Problems. And like it was, I think about when God told us to spend Wednesdays together. Mm -hmm. And we didn't understand the capacity of it. But as we started to break it down, he started to show us like, I'm, I'm growing y'all, mm -hmm. but I'm also growing y'all in me. Mm -hmm. I've created y'all a new revenue stream. Mm -hmm. I've given y'all time to get to know each other outside of kids. Mm -hmm. It's checking all the, um, my mom is getting time with her grandchild. It's just checking all of these different boxes. It's giving us it's the true. flexibility to be able to go down and help family out when when moments notice. Yep. It's done so it's many like, things. It's adding money. Money is not central. Money is the byproduct. It's a byproduct. It's like you're obedient. Here you go. Right. Not like I'm doing this for a check. Right. Right. So and that's and that's I think. Oh, okay, God. So I had this I, I had this kind of like thought going in my mind earlier, like what's happening in like the influencer space and this idea that like the money is crazy out here. Like the money, the amount of money that you can make, like selling people things, because that is the influencer marketing industry. It is people who have the ability to persuade and sell. That's where the money comes from. They're not paying us because we have a large audience and they're they're glad in that. Because you're talking about God. They're not doing that. <laughs> they're paying us to sell their product, to yeah, market right. their product. Yeah. And if all you as a creator or an influencer are doing is selling product or marketing product. or marketing product that's one thing but if you call yourself a believer and a creator an influencer you cannot do only no. the selling you have to be serving yeah. and you have to be serving from a real place from an authentic place from wherever god has you yeah. you have to serve you cannot yeah. fall into the hole of this money crazy great and I can just keep leveling up. I can keep increasing my numbers. I can keep increasing my fee and go and go and go. There's not enough treasures to be eaten by, what do you say, by, by, by moths and basically storing up earthly treasures to be eaten by like And to go stuff. rotten essentially. Yeah, because you rot. can't, yeah, because you can't do. You can't take it with you. Yeah. You can't, you know, but it's this idea that in in this industry in this space in like social media like this is real like the money is real the allure of the money is real yeah. there's been moments where i felt oh. like whoa when was the last time that i did content that wasn't with a strategy in mind to make more money i mean think about it now baby like we say no no we say no a lot but like I would say for me, I had those feelings of like questioning, starting to question around like 2018 ish. And at that point I had been creating content for what? Seven years, seven, eight years. And had all these opportunities and doing all these things, but that's when it really started to start to turn. Like when milk starts to spoil. Or when it's like, like, is this it? Yeah, this yeah. Not, like, oh, it's just. Like, am I gonna just continue to? It's just the money, and then yeah. you buy more things. Yeah. You have more things. Yeah. But I still feel confused as hell about what life is supposed to really be like and what it's supposed to be about. I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking and searching for purpose. Like, and that was the pregnant. time, and then I got pregnant. But like, or we got pregnant. And I was in the Nike. You were in the Nike. Shoe. At that point, I, I was in there. I, yeah. I was like, 
Drinking the Kool-Aid. Drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> no other athletic brands in the yeah, house. Yeah, Nike yeah. only, every day, all day, period. But questioning the same thing as you, like, is this it? Mm -hmm. Like, to to climb this battle, I, I gotta do what? Like, dang, n none of, and the more I fall to like, okay, well, the reason why I'm doing my job, the reason why I'm doing my job every day is to change lives of people that came from communities like me and show them that it's possible for them too. However, I was, I was one of the only people thinking like that. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the point where you continue to climb and continue to grow, those conversations, that's not everybody's goal. Mm -hmm. And so you may start off with that goal. Right. You start off with the right intentions. Right. But eventually the money, the power, the fame, the, those things, proverbs, give me, don't give me riches, nor, nor poverty, because both of them have mindsets that come along with them that we don't have the ability to control. So eventually, especially if we did, yeah. especially if we're saying I did it, especially if, if I'm working 10 hours to 11, 12 hours a day. Going hard. Going. Going hard. hard. I used to come out to the home and sit in front of the TV with a football, football game, Monday night football, and I'm working on a deck. And I come up to bed at 11 p.m. and I'm getting up at 5.30 to go to work. Mm -hmm. So it's like grinding, hustling. Eventually, you get the big paycheck and it's like, that's not enough. It, 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 um, and <laughs> literally, you get the big paycheck you're like, I was saying, and you're like, okay. I want more. I want I can, more. I can do more. If there's, it's like, this, if there's a, there's a, there is a thirst that you that you begin to inhibit and and you begin to nurture mm -hmm. to the point where the promotion this time is not enough. I got it, but now I want the next promotion. I want the yes. next title. I want the next, the next, next level. role. I want, I want the want... next check. And I want the next thing level. And yes. I want the next Yes. To the point that you look back. You look around, and it's like, where is God? Oh, not even where is God. There. Where is where peace? The cloud? No, where is peace? Look not even from that. Is. I know, but like from you saying, mine is the from, religion. From, from my perspective, yeah, yeah. as somebody who did, who really, I mean, I was around it, but never really like in my spiritual walk and really like connected. Where the peace at? Where's the joy? Where's the happiness that I'm supposed to have because I did all the things? Because I, I did all the things that they told me I'm to do. I'm in the law. And so. now I feel more overwhelmed, more anxious, yeah. more perplexed, yeah. and confused yeah. than ever before. Yeah. This is not what they told me was supposed to happen. Yeah. But the they that I'm speaking of literally don't even exist. Because it's literally societal norms and like these expectations we put on each other it's, um, and, and we put on our kids of, of just a bunch of stuff that actually it, it doesn't make any sense. It's There's the, no follow through. There's no the like. and useful spiritual principles of this world. Literally Paul called them weak and useful spiritual useless. principles. Useless. Weak and useless spiritual principles of this world. Not of God's world. Of this world. And of who culture. Of runs this world? The enemy. The enemy. So then he says, so yes, like, we spot, spot on that. Like, you did not, okay, we talked about all that. Those false teachers, they're trying to shut you off from me so that you will pay attention only to them. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right. But let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. So Paul's continuous, like giving people the benefit of the doubt, grace, extended grace is incredible. Because he's like, yeah, like they, 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 they're only doing, clearly they're only doing this for themselves. 
and they're not doing it for themselves, cool. But their actions outside of when I'm around you, outside of when the spotlight is on, outside of when you can do when you can do something for them, outside of when they're doing it to be seen, they should still be doing these things. Mm -hmm. Good stuff should happen whether there's a camera around or not. Mm -hmm. Good stuff should happen whether this person is around to hear what you did or not. Mm -hmm. Good stuff should happen. I mean, Jesus talks about it. Don't see, and I don't get hella gets with this, you know. Influencer, period. Influencer. <laughs> <laughs> We're not ready to go there, babe. We're not ready to go there, okay? We're not ready to go there. Oh so, my God. We're we gonna stop here. Okay? No, no, no. We gotta just finish this section. Okay. I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again. And they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. I wish I were with you right now so I could change my tone. But at this distance, I don't know how else to help you. So Paul's like, man, like this hurts because I thought we I thought we were through this part. Yeah. But if I gotta keep laboring with you, then so be it. Yeah. Um, because I I, I need you to get it. Mm -hmm. And I need you to get it so much that I'm sending you this tone so that you understand the importance of what I'm saying. Right. And if I was with you in person, maybe it'll be different. Maybe I can tell you this while holding your hand, right. while giving you a hug or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really do need you to know the sincerity through my words that like these people that's telling you that you have to obey the law, these people that's trying to that's giving diminish you what I'm saying to get to, you to follow to them and not to follow. Mm -hmm. It's like be wary of that. Know that there's purpose behind it. It ain't just, I'm trying to help you. No, I'm trying to help me. Yeah. Like, and you have to be able, you have to have the discernment to know the difference. Yeah. From when somebody is legitimately trying to help you and they get no gain or their gain is coming from God mm -hmm. or they're trying to help you because, well, you're going to help me later or this helps there's me somewhere. There's some personal now. gain there's on there. There's some personal gain on there. Yeah. Up front. Yeah. And that's something that like, that's honestly, that's something that the world teaches us mm -hmm. um, at a very high level. Mm -hmm. And unless you make every effort, that for me that effort only came spiritually, to get away from that, we'll find ourselves repeating that I'll do this for you. If you every, do this. Everything is transactional. Yeah, Love is transactional. Me. People yeah. get married transactionally. Mm -hmm. People are making big decisions in their lives based on the fact that one day, you gonna do something for me. Right. One day you gonna look out for me. Right, like a and barter system. Literally, like with our lives. And that's not the, God doesn't work that way. Right. As much as that God, God ain't no slot machine. God ain't no ATM machine. God ain't no genuine lamp. Like it don't work like that. It, like we take it out of context oftentimes. Like um, do it to others as want others to do to you because we see it as. Okay, well, I'm nice to you, so you better be right. nice to and me. And it's based off of what I want, and it's like, no. If uh -huh. do unto others as, as you, is, is what? Isn't there, no, do unto others as you want done unto you? Yeah, something, something like that, yeah. But that's in the context of like, you're choosing goodness first. Yeah, and, and to be honest, like God wants us well, to choose goodness, so that if we are Jesus good, said it more so from a judgment standpoint, is like the same measure that you judge okay, God's yes. going to judge you. So yeah. if you're harsh in terms of how you judge other people, then God's going to be harsh in judgment to you. But we should. What Paul is also saying in Galatians four is because Jesus came and died, that God showed us that much love through that action. Yeah. If we play the love card. You're not gonna want to to do none of these other things. If you're playing a love card, you're not gonna want to solicit stuff from people. If you're right. playing a love card, like love is the thing that's gonna stop all of that. Mm -hmm. It's not just because you made a conscious effort not to do it. Yeah, that may work one time, but in order for it to become a lifestyle, in order for it to become your legacy, you have to practice love in all things, whether somebody's visible or not, because you know. That even if that person didn't see what I did, God saw what I did. So because of that and that alone, that's enough to change the way I treat you. 100%. Let's pray. All right. <laughs> that was good. Want to pray? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord.
Lord for today. Thank you for our revelation. Lord, thank you for answering the prayer that we actually prayed before we started talking, which was for you to reveal what you want us to understand through your word. And I thank you for the understanding that you've given us through your word today. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Lord, we pray that your will be done, your preferred will be done for the rest of the day and in all, all in our lives and every single person that watches this video's life. Lord, we prefer and we pray for your preferred will be done in their lives as well. And Lord, thank you for, for, for giving us the, the desire to seek you and share it because we know that when two or more are gathered in your name, you're there. This is the Lord, thank you for the opportunity to have access to you. Thank you for your son. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.